First Sergeant Kep here with Company D, Second United States Sharpshooters. And Corporal Soldering. Captain Whitehall. And today we have another viewer requested video, the duties of a corporal. Uh, the corporal is a very important role in the military and especially in Civil War reenacting. And if you've received your first promotion, we want to go over a few basics uh, to help you portray the role uh, better as a reenactor. Uh, as well as some insight as to the actual military duties of the Civil War. Um, one thing that is a Company D tradition, whenever you get a warrant as a non-commissioned officer, uh, Captain Whitehall provides uh, the, the new uh, NCOs with Couch's 1865 Customs of Service for non-commissioned officers and soldiers. This is a must-have if you're going to dig deep and learn all the particulars. This is also great. For privates, we talked about it in our duties of a private video. Uh, today, we are going to be going over our expectations of rank that we have for Company D, and it is uh, you can find that on our uh, homepage, I believe, at secondusss.com. So, um, the first thing, let's just start out with the the intro to the duties of a corporal. Uh, corporals are the first step in the show of leadership, and are the company's best privates. They show the basic core values of the unit and the future of the unit's leadership structure. The corporal means to assist the sergeant or first sergeant in daily tasks and details so the company runs smoothly. They ensure details are carried out properly and in a timely manner. Anything you'd like to add to that sort of introduction? I think that just about sums it up. A corporal's job is to be a role model for the privates, a leader for the privates, and to just be what a private should strive to be like. Uh, a corporal should be the first one up, should be the first one ready, should be the first one cleaning their rifle after everybody after the event shuts down. Yeah, I mean, really, like a corporal's kind of a you know an older sibling, you know, kind of the big brother that you really, you know, that cool older brother that yeah. you want to be like, and it's just like wow, you know, they're kind of god in the private size. <laughs> Yeah, and yeah, and, and you hit the nail on the head. Like one of one of the biggest things is uh, if you have the fortune to have rank in the hobby, you are a role model. Uh, you, you no longer get to like sleep in and have your camp a mess or be the last one ready. Um, the way you present yourself in a military fashion, follow orders, and show leadership uh, sets the tone for everyone that uh, is under your watch. Um, and for the rest of the company. So you are the role model for privates. So if you want a good um, enlisted corps, you need to show that by the way that you portray yourself uh, as a junior NCO. Um, so in our organization, we have an age requirement, which you know, is a lot of safety and maturity can come with a few years. Um, we have uh, at least two years of consistent membership in Company D. Um, and the other thing too with uh, having rank is attendance and participation. Um, it's uh, showing up to as many events as you possibly can uh, to be a reliable uh, per, uh, member of your company's leadership structure. You don't want to asset even. Yeah, uh, you don't want to just like, oh yeah, I have rank, and then you're never there, and so someone else always has to pick up uh, your slack. Um, or your rank eventually at that point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you, you might you might get demoted, um, and then uh, demonstrates mastery of basic tactics, drill, unit history, and leads by example. So you need to know your stuff is basically what that's saying. A yeah. corporal ought to know what's going on. They need to have a general idea of what an event's going to look like. You need to have a general idea of what the battlefield is going to, how operating the battlefield looks like. And there's really no way around needing to know that kind of stuff. Manuals yeah. Manuals exist for a reason. Yeah, Manuals exist for a reason. Yeah, so this this is about having um, uh, technical proficiency in, in whatever manual you are using uh, for your organization. So in our, in our, we use cases. So uh, we expect that our corporals are, they haven't just read it, they are proficient and they understand it and they can teach it and that they do. So they are the, the first line of training for new recruits, um, catching any little mistakes, uh, making sure that their uniform is used uh, properly 
that the uh, privates know how to uh, safely and proficiently use the weapon system that's been assigned to them. So they are also like our, our first line of, of safety and uh, military preparedness. Um, and, yeah, and also too, like by, by showing your dedication to become a leader, you're showing your dedication to the hobby and the history that goes along with it. So your research, the way you care for your gear and the, your knowledge is also part of being a role model on your first step of being uh, a junior NCO. Um, then it uh, demonstrates uh, mastery of all your organizations um, and your company's safety rules and regulations. You wanna touch on that? Um, I think we kinda already have, you just need to, again, just like you need to know your manual inside and out, you need to know the rules of your organization inside and out. Or at least be familiar enough with them that you can make your own judgment calls. Yeah, and, and be able to convey that. Because remember, um, a, a corporal is like a, a super private, right? It, it, you don't you don't have you know you're, you're there as, as the big brother mm. so it's not like oh I can boss people around now it's like no you you're like their brother uh, you're like the, the older sibling who's showing them around like hey you know see those flags out there well there's a ground charge we need to say X number of feet away from those uh, you know uh, you're making sure that they're also staying hydrated yeah. and they play an important role in making sure that that I have, as a first sergeant, have an effective fighting force to help turn over to the captain ready to use in a battle. Um, demonstrates commitment to historical authenticity. Um, that alone is one of the, the major pillars yeah. of your promotion track in our organization. So that's about investment and dedication. So you want to... Yeah, so I mean, what I look for, at least with our corporals, is, you know, do they have all their gear? You know, do they have everything from a rifle down to brogans? Do they have uh, quality gear? You know, having, you know, a corporal who really knows his stuff is great. But, again, it's that uh, role model example of, you know, is their gear, you know, either high-end or is it, you know, mid-level? You know, obviously, you're going to be looked up towards. You kind of want to look your best with, you know, obviously best means possible, you know, financially, you know, don't go broke just because you became an NCO. <laughs> By all means, I'm not <laughs> advocating that whatsoever, but, you know, definitely strive to have a better impression. Yeah, if um, you don't, if you, if you are promoted and you still have a entry level uniform, you can at least upgrade that a little bit. I, I have my colors a little better than most of the super budget coats. I don't have a Hainsworth coat. Yeah. I have a better You are coat. complete. You I'm have complete. a knapsack. Yeah. You can you can bivouac <laughs> with everything yeah. that you have. So there's yeah, it's uh authenticity isn't about having like the biggest budget in the world. Mm -hmm. It's about a commitment to to your gear, the history, uh the food, the overall impression and setting that that tone for the rest of the the privates. Um executes orders from the sergeant or first sergeant delegates the duties and details and sees they are done. Um, this is this is really important. So a, a corporal is sort of like... <sighs> He's the hammer. Yeah. He's the hammer of the company. I'm trying to think of like a, like a everyday role, uh, like, not quite like a middle manager, but... Shift supervisor. Yeah, shift supervisor. Um, and then delegates the duties and details and sees they are done. Um, sees that they are done is really important. I feel like this this hit this touches all ranks. Um, as, as a as a corporal or a sergeant, you should never ask someone else to do something you can't do or you don't know you don't know how to do. Um, and that you're you're if they don't know how to do it, you know how to and you can educate them. And you're not just bossing people around. You are there supervising. It's not go do my bidding <laughs> it's like you and i are going to go get water yeah yeah uh and if they have any issues i mean you're, you're looking for because you need uh, as a corporal you need to understand where the privates are at uh, as far as their their knowledge and skill level so you can report that back to the first sergeant or the sergeant to say hey maybe we need some more uh technical training in this area our, our camp craft is a is a little as a little, uh, we need to refresh it, uh, or maybe uh, our work ethic's getting a little sloppy, so maybe we need to have a little pep talk. Um, so being present 
uh, as far as being a supervisor and being willing to pitch in and get your hands dirty along with them, but making sure that they learn how to do it and you let them uh, perform the tasks to the best of their ability. Um, reports to the sergeant or the first sergeant uh, when the sergeant is not around. Uh, when asks uh, when tasks have been completed or unable to be completed due to circumstances. Uh, so this is my first line of information, and. So, you know, rather than, you know, having to watch dozens of uh, dozens of privates on my own and try to figure that out, the corporals need, you need to keep your pulse on the company. Uh, you need to know how everyone's health is, what their attitude's like, uh, what their morale's like, and, and be able to communicate that effectively and efficiently uh, to your superiors. Absolutely. Um... Well, yeah, and the other thing too, it's not just about uh, it's not just about the reporting. I think there's something more there. It's that you're accessible to talk to. Yeah. yeah. It's like I, I, you know, I don't know this, right? You know, maybe I'm, I'm having an issue, or uh, can I run this by you before you know we talk to somebody else? So you, you need to be personable and agreeable enough to be open and accessible to your fellow uh, privates. Yeah, you can't be the kind of corporal where you know someone you know, hey, corporal Slaughter, like, oh. <coughs> What do you want? It's like, no, like, you gotta, like, yes, private, what can I do for you today? <laughs> yeah, yeah, well. What can I possibly do for you today? Because sometimes they come to you for kind of a lame reason. Yeah. It's usually like. Can you tie my shoes? Yeah. How, how, do, how do I sew on a button? It's like, you should already know how to sew a button. I got all my gear on. It's hard for me to bend over. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, well, and, and this is sort of an important experience that you and I had as we were sort of building this leadership base uh, in our company. Uh, is early on we had to be you know hands on to kind of do the up training and yeah. be there uh, on the spot to, to help support our junior NCOs. Uh, but then we had to back off, yeah. and it's like, hey, we love you all, we're all family, but during during um, business hours, public hours, like we are, you know, we're going to give you space. Yep. And it's not because we don't like you. It's because you need to bond with your junior NCOs because that is a, an important dynamic. And so then that way, this means more rather than me and the captain kind of overstepping everybody. Yeah. And it kind of builds, you know, squad, platoon, whatever you want to divide your group into kind of esprit de corps and pride within that yeah, sole group I, within the main body of the company. Our two platoons, they're, they're not necessarily fixed, but the, the short people are always going to be in one platoon and the tallest people are always going to be in the other platoon. And there's a very different esprit de corps between our two platoons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they, yeah, definitely bond with their line mates. Yeah, as well as the rest of the company. Yeah. But you can just tell where it's like... They're in the same squad together. <laughs> that, that, that's been one great thing about, about this weekend is we're really starting to see the individual platoons um, coalesce and bond together. Uh, it's, it's really fantastic to watch. And in, as, a, as a corporal, you're an important part of that camaraderie. Yeah. Um, you're actually the head of that camaraderie, really. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's your own little bus that you're driving, <laughs> essentially. Um, and then this one, again, anytime you got, you got rank, train junior enlisted members for the duties of corporal in case of absence. Uh, Company D, we're all about up training. So you need to make sure that you have people underneath you who are competent and you're also going to be keeping your eye um, open for, you know, the, the most motivated, uh, most potential new recruits and more senior privates. Um, as a junior non-commissioned officer, sets the example and conducts himself with professionalism at all times. That's really important. Uh, again, just because you have stripes um, doesn't mean you need to be, you know, rude. A terror. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't need to be a terror. Uh, be firm but fair. Yeah. That's really what it is. But it's also, you know, with that professionalism is, you know, after I was at events. Yeah, definitely cut loose, but don't, you know, have a drink or two if you want. You yeah. Know, if you're of age... A beer, yeah. something like that, and kind of relax, but don't get so... <laughs> yeah, don't be complete, crawling out on your lips. Yeah, don't get <laughs> to the point of intoxication where you can't perform your duties the next day because you're hungover. And we've seen that in our organization that we belong to. Not really with the federal side, but the Confederate side, they kind of like to frat house it up every night. <laughs> you can just see these NCOs around there just like... Go over there and do that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. 
Um, well, I guess going back to your, your, your hammer example, uh, th this could be kind of a, a stretch, but uh, tack hammer, framing hammer, sledgehammer, okay? <laughs> so if you have a, a problem or an issue as a private, you want to go to your corporal to help you solve it first, right? Or if there's a discipline issue, you want your corporal to be on the spot to handle it because that's a tiny hammer. If it gets to me, it's going to be a bigger hammer. And heaven forbid that discipline issue gets to the captain. That's usually when they're executing. Yeah, it's like a it's like a, a coffin nail hammer. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, you know, not only that too. There's a reason why corporal punishment came to be a name because it was up to the corporals to deal out yep. punishments, at least to an extent. I yeah. Mean, you murder someone, yeah, that's going to be going to me, and <laughs> yeah. it's not going to be pretty, but uh, that's, you know, actual military times, not uh, reenacting. Yeah. You murder someone out of reenactment, that's that's completely out of anyone. <laughs> <laughs> um, overseas, the training of new members in the position of the soldier, manual of arms, and basic company drill. Um, this is really important, and, and you see weakness in the basics uh, all the time in reenacting. If, if people can't wheel, um, they, they come to a halt and they're stretched out like an accordion, that's because their junior NCOs aren't given the time, the authority, and the support to train in the basics. Um, your cor as a corporal, you are the master of the duties of a private and that school of the soldier. They need to know the step, the speed of the step. Uh, all the techniques and reasoning to using uh, the manual of arms. So then that way, when they come to me for more company level drill, then they are prepared in the basics because the basics get ignored all the time. And it doesn't matter how much time your regiment uh, or your battalion spends doing, you know, whole battalion wheels, it's not going to be right because no one trains the basics. And so you're just like, well, this is kind of a waste of time because they don't know how long their step's supposed to be and they don't know how many steps uh, a minute this march is supposed to be. And so it's your job as a corporal to be proficient and to work on your teaching ability to train those soldiers for your first sergeant. And it's, you know, going back to the whole hammer thing, you know, it's a way of avoiding the framing hammer and then therefore the sledgehammer because it's like <laughs> the corporal's failing their drill all right, guess what? We're all doing company drill for two hours, <laughs> yeah. and everyone's, you know, hot, tired, exhausted, hungry. <laughs> you know, they only kind of have one person to blame, and it's their corporal for not teaching them that fundamental basics. Yeah, but you, you, as a corporal, you could also be, like, the good guy. So if you're watching drill and you're seeing maybe uh, a couple new people struggling a little bit, uh, rather than punish everybody, it's like, hey, you know what? I, I feel like, let me come and uh, work with you a little bit individually. And you can take them aside. They're not called out. Yep. Save them the embarrassment. embarrassment of being called out by the first sergeant or by the captain. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you can catch a lot more flies with honey. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then uh, basics, if the first sergeant or sergeant is absent, take morning roll call, absent reporting for sick call for the morning report forms. Uh, so being able to fill in for the next position is really important, knowing the, the paperwork, uh, the paperwork that goes with it. And again, that's communication with your next rank up to make sure that you are getting the information that you need to be successful. And the big one with that too is guard detail. Yep. Corporals mostly led guard details. Yes, you had a sergeant of the guard, an officer mm -hmm. of the guard, but it was really the corporals that were the shakers and the movers with doing that. And it's definitely something every corporal should know, at least how to basically do and then refine it from there yeah. as long as they get that you know again the fundamentals yeah i mean that's really what it is with the corporal is they're the first set of fundamentals in the strength of a company and that's actually a, a killer point too like if you're if you're a new corporal or um you know maybe you have a, a unit that's wanting to develop more if you want to turn that impression up to 11 learn how to do guard detail and those, yeah. those corporal leadership roles and then teach that to your company yeah because that will blow your battalion away if you roll in and you're trying to do that impression right. Yeah. If that's, that you rarely see that in the hobby. When it's done right, it's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. um, takes part in all camp activities and preparations, uh, set up fire pits, firewood, water details, um, defarbing, uh, guard mounts like we just talked about, special details. Um, so this is as, as sort of like head private, 
the enlisted camp is your house and you want to make sure that it looks professional um, that it's defarbed that it's clean everything's put away that camp is ready to function as as a good household yeah. so that it can perform all of its necessary duties um, and I think that um, that also goes I think the other important thing for corporals is unit readiness um, I know it gets really hot and sometimes we get back to camp and we just want to toss off all of our gear um, you know there's like everyone seems to have like a company pig pen um, so it's really important that when when you get get back to camp that you you, you load your cartridge box you, you uh, fill up your caps uh, you refill your canteen and you keep all your gear ready yeah, you need to make sure that everybody's ready to go out before they can actually relax yeah and, uh, that falls on the corporal to make sure that everything's getting done yeah so as, as an nco as a corporal no one should ever have to wait on you um, but you all also play an important role in making sure that the privates can be ready at a moment's notice. Uh, we shouldn't have to be, you know, called into action and have to wait 20 minutes while people find their gear and get rounds and, oh, like, oh, my canteen's empty. Um, it's about maintaining unit readiness and preparedness uh, at all times. So that, that becomes the military side and the practicality. Um, and you are sort of the, the watch eye of you know, how's everyone doing health wise, comfort wise? Um, are we out of water? Um, and it's not just about assigning details because like, oh, I have power. It's because, hey, this is for the benefit of everybody because you are the NCO of the people. Yeah, it's actually a great way to put it. That is. Okay, well, I think that actually covers our list. Like I said, we have this list um, at secondusss.com. Um, Feel free to, to, to study it. We have the other NCO ranks and officer ranks on here. It could be a, a useful way to start a conversation in your organization, as well as uh, maybe it could be a building block for creating your own expectations of rank because writing stuff down is important. Yeah, no, it's real. Yeah, every, well, yeah, and everyone needs to know what is expected of them and what they're you know what's gonna what they're gonna be evaluated on uh it's just you know it's friendly accountability so that way everyone can be held to the same standard and we have that level of fairness uh let us know if you have uh, any more questions down below this certainly was not exhaustive uh and also too be sure to check down below we have uh, lots of uh great advice down in the comments section be sure to like and subscribe and uh we'll see you all next time